welcome back to another Halloween video. So today we are doing the second of the three Boogie Boys. Today we have Barrel. And you guys know we did lock yesterday. Well, post a lock yesterday. Uh, so today is barrel and tomorrow will be shock. I'm very excited. I'm very excited for these looks. Um, you guys know, love the Boogie Boys, Never for Christmas, all time favorite movie. You guys hear this every single time. Um, but yeah, so yesterday I also talked about how they died. So maybe I'll talk some more facts during the voiceover, see what we can come up with. So if you want to see how I turn myself into this handsome creature, then keep on watching. All right, hello everybody. So, we ended up starting off with the Mayron makeup palette and realizing that we had to paint our entire face white and that's how much we had left. Um, so, that was fun. I need to go buy more. Fantastic. So, we start off by painting our entire face white and, ooh, I mixed a little bit of black with that. My bad. Uh, so we painted our entire face white, and then I forgot to show you guys what eyeshadow palette I was using, but uh, I used the Glam Light X Cake Palette, and I ended up taking the blue shade, I think it's called like Blueberry, I could be mistaken, um, and just really messily creating a circle, like going around the brow bone and underneath the lower lash line, um, trying not to drag it on too much but just really creating a very messy circle. And then I ended up taking the purple shade. I'm assuming it's like grape or something, but I'm, I I really don't know. I'm sorry. Um, and then I ended up taking that, putting that right in the crease on the lid and right underneath the lower lash line to create the sunken depth look of the eye. Um, and then we went and started the nose. So with the nose, I went in with the blue shade um, on a flat brush, kind of one that you would use for eyeliner, and outlined where the nose will be. And then I went in again over top of that with a little bit of purple um, and mixed the blue and the purple on the, the same brush and kind of dragged it towards my nose uh, to towards the tip of the nose as you can see here um, and then after that I refreshed the blue and kind of dragged it up a little bit like blended it up towards the bridge of my nose to create the depth and the shadowing and then I went back in with the blue shade and kind of outlined where I wanted the mouth to be um, and then went in with my Mayron paint palette again. I took the black shade and added some nostrils to the nose. And then I went in with one of the deep blue shades and again outlined and drew in the mouth um, where the lips will be. Then I went in with the white that we used to paint the face, added the teeth, and then went back in with the black from the same palette and... You painted in the mouth to make it look like it was open and smiling. Um, I went and did some contouring. So I went back in with the blue and contoured my forehead around the nose, around the mouth for some definition, and of course the cheekbones, um, trying to get my face to be a little bit more rounded. And then I added some lashes. These lashes are from my brand that's going to be coming out soon, so stay tuned. Uh, little sneak snakes and then I added the wig that I got from work and the lollipop is from Spirit of Halloween and the mask is from Spirit of Halloween as well and then I added one of my spooky shirts to fit as his. So now I'm going to be talking a little bit about some information from The Nightmare for Christmas um, that you may or may not know. So one is that the Night Before Christmas songs were actually written before the script was. So, Kidnap the Sandy Claus, um, This is Halloween, What's This, all of that was written before the actual script of the movie was written. That's pretty cool. 
Another one is that The Night Before Christmas was based on a poem that uh, Tim Burton has written when he was actually an animator for Disney. And then it ended up being turned into the movie. But the original poem only started with um, Jack, the dog Zero, and Santa Claus. So it's pretty cool that they only took that they took the three characters, Jack, Zero, and Santa Claus, and turned it into this amazing movie with all these new characters. Just shows how amazing people can be when they're creative. Especially when it was only three characters. Um, and I don't know if you guys know this, but it's probably very well known by now that Danny Elfman was the voice behind Jack Skeleton. So Jack Skeleton actually had a different actor voicing him, but the singing uh, was actually Danny Elfman. So that was pretty cool. Um, Danny Elfman actually also voiced two other characters in the film. So he also voiced Beryl and the clown with the tearaway face. I knew that he voiced Beryl, but I didn't know that he was the um, clown with the tearaway face. It's pretty cool. That man is very creative. Um, Oogie Boogie was actually the toughest character to design, uh, because he's big and, well, I mean, he's pretty shapeless, you know? So, apparently they had to re-sculpt it and just keep trying until they got one that they really liked, and he was one of the hardest to, uh, recreate and move around. And I can definitely see that he would be the hardest one to create. Um, so, some cameos for Jack Skeleton. One of them is he's in Beetlejuice. So, in the scene where they're doing the resurrection and Lydia calls Beetlejuice three times and he shows up and he starts doing, like, the whole circus thing. Um, there's a part where I forget what the name of it is actually called, but Jack Skeleton ends up coming out. It's his face. Um, and you can very clearly see that it is him. Another one is actually in Coraline. Um, Coraline is not a Tim Burton film, but I believe I did see this one time. And he appears in the egg when the other mother is cracking the egg. You can kind of see his face a little bit. I'm not sure if that was intentional, but, you know, he's there. Um, he is also in James and the Giant Peach. I've never heard of that movie or seen that movie. Um, I did not know there's a movie called The Giant Peach. Um, is it about a giant peach? I'm assuming. I'm assuming it's about James and a giant peach. But uh, he appears on the pirate flag and on the haunted ship. He has also made many appearances in The Princess Frog and Sleepy Hollow, Alice in Wonderland, and Finding Nemo, which is strange because none of them are really horror movies or anything really to do with Halloween besides Sleepy Hollow, and I'm not even sure that any of them are Tim Burton films besides Alice in Wonderland. Did you know that the fountain that is in the most of Tim Burton's movies, so the fountain that is in Alice in Wonderland and the fountain that Jack comes out of um, in the first scene of Night Before Christmas is actually a real fountain that um, Tim Burton ended up taking a liking to and added it to many, many of his movies. It is a fountain that is actually at a graveyard. Uh, Tim Burton said that he doesn't want the film to have a sequel. Well, I do, so let's get cracking on it. Okay. Oh, there is one scene that the director said he really regrets replacing. So remember when the vampires were playing hockey um, and everybody was enjoying the snow and the sports and Santa Claus flew over? Um, so when the vampires were playing hockey and hit the puck right at the camera, it was originally supposed to be Tim Burton's head. But the many of the producers didn't think that Tim would like that. So they ended up replacing it with a hockey puck. I really think that they should have kept it because I doubt that Tim Burton would have really cared that it was his head as many people love spooky stuff that are watching the movie and, you know, it's, it's related to Halloween. I think it would have been perfect. I kind of wish they kept it. And here is the final look 
I got this wig this year from work and then I'm just wearing a little skeleton shirt like he does and his lollipop. So basically what I did is a glam version of him. I love how it turned out. The female version of Beryl. I love how it turned out. We have the mask. So thank you so, so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Comment down below what you love to do every Halloween. Of course, I love to watch movies. I'm doing a 31 days of movie marathon. So definitely let me know what you guys like to do. And obviously, all my socials are linked down below. I'm in a rush, so I gotta skedaddle. Thank you so, so much for watching. I love you guys. I'll see you guys tomorrow for the next one. Bye!